So we begin Children's Chapel normally by singing Dona Nobis Pachem, which means give us peace. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Hello everyone, my name is Katherine Hodges. I'm here with my storytelling buddy, Summer. Can you say hi, Summer? <laughs> she is all cozy on this kind of rainy day. I hope you all are too, or that it is sunny where you are. But we are here today to read a story with you. So our story starts on page 498. So if you have a book at home and you wanna read along with us, that's great. You can pause this video and turn to page 498. If you don't have a book, that's no problem, I'm gonna read it to you so you can just listen and follow along with me. So I'm on page 498 and our story today is called The Ascension. So it starts with, after Jesus died and rose again, he and his disciples got together near Jerusalem. Jesus had some instructions for them. As you know, God is doing amazing things in the world, he said, and your help is needed. We need you to go tell stories about me. Tell your friends and family and everyone you meet that you've learned by following me. Be my witness in the world. I'm going to pause there for one second because I want to know what the word witness means. Jesus tells us to be my witness in the world. What is Jesus asking us to do? Well, a witness, I am reading out of my dictionary here, a witness is a person who sees an event or evidence and proof. So the disciples did meet and see Jesus. Can we still be witnesses now, years later? We sure can. I'm going to finish the story and then we'll talk about that after. Then suddenly, so Jesus gave them the instructions and the story keeps going. Then suddenly, Jesus was rising up in the air. What was going on? He was being lifted up into a cloud. Jesus' friends looked around. Two men in white robes had joined them. The men said, What are you just standing around looking up toward heaven? Don't you worry. Jesus will come back someday. Right, said one of Jesus' disciples. Meanwhile, we have some work to do. Let's get going. So that is the end of our story. So before Jesus, he had died, he had rose again, he had conquered death, that means he beat it, right? And before he went up into heaven, he ascended into heaven, that means he went up into heaven to be with Jesus, to be with God, our Father. He gave one very important instruction to his disciples and to us, to all of us who are followers of Christ, all of us Christians, everyone watching this video. So he said, I want you to tell everyone you meet, your family and your friends, what you have learned from following me. And then he said, be my witness in the world. And we looked up that witness means someone who saw something or proof or evidence. So proving something, right? So Jesus asked us to be his proof, to tell other people that he is really real, 
that's our job. That's kind of a big job. But you know what? You can do it. So I'm going to give you two things. I was going to give you one, but I think you all can handle it. I'm going to give you two challenges this week, okay? Here is what I want you to do. I want you to first ask someone, an adult in your family or an older sibling. You could ask your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. You could call up a cousin, anyone you want. I want you to ask an adult who loves you to tell you a story that they've learned about Jesus. So I want you to go up to an adult in your life and say, will you tell me a story about Jesus that you know? Or you could ask them, can you tell me a story where you saw Jesus in your life? Where did you, have you seen Jesus? Either one is fine. So that's the first thing I want you to do is I want you to ask an adult a story about Jesus, tell, to tell you a story about Jesus, either in their life or one they've learned. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to be a witness. I'm not asking you to do this, actually. God asked you to do this. So I'm just reminding you to be a witness. So what I want you to do is I want you to tell someone a story about Jesus. And it could be this story that we just read together. It could be any story that you know. But this is a great one to do because it's fresh in your mind. We just went over it. So you can do this a lot of different ways. You might be saying, well, Catherine, I'm not going outside a lot now because we're staying home and we're trying to stay safe and healthy. That's fine. You don't have to leave your house to tell someone. You could tell someone who's living in your house, a brother, sister, mom, dad. You could call someone on the phone and tell them a story about Christ. You could write a letter. I guarantee you if you wrote a letter to someone like your grandma or grandpa or a friend, they would be so excited to get that in the mail. You could write them a letter. And in that letter, you could tell them the story we just learned or a story about Jesus. You could video chat with someone on Zoom or Google Meet, all those good ways you all are staying in touch. So you can choose how you want to do it. But those are the two things I want you to do this week. Let's review real quick. Ask an adult a story about Jesus to tell you a story about Jesus and to share a story with Jesus. So you share with someone however you want a story about Jesus. And it can be the one we just learned. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Summer, hope you have a fantastic week too. There she is. And she says, have a great week. And we hope to see you all back at St. Mary's soon when it is safe and healthy. Bye, guys. Now that we've heard our story today, let's say the Children's Creed together. I believe in God above. I believe in Jesus' love, and I believe his spirit, too, comes to teach me what to do. And I believe that I can be kind and loving, Lord, like thee. Amen. Hi, friends. Today we're going to be reviewing a song that we've done a few times in Children's Chapel now called Seek Ye First. You might remember it. Uh, but just in case, let me remind you of the words. The first verse goes, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia. The second verse goes, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia. And then we'll go back and do the first verse one more time. So if you messed up the words, you get a second chance at it. So uh, here we go.
our five finger prayer. First we say the prayers for the people closest to us, our families and those who we love so dearly. Our pointer finger reminds us to pray for the people who point the way for us, our teachers and leaders. Our tallest finger, that reminds us to pray for the people who are in charge, the people who make big decisions for our, our daily life and most especially for the people who rush in when there is need for help. They are our leaders. Our ring finger, the one that's hard to hold up by itself, that finger we hold up to remember to pray for the people who are sick or are in need. And it's an important time to remember those people right now. And then our pinky finger is the prayer for ourselves because it is always right and good to ask God for what we need to. I hope that you have a wonderful week and that all week long you know that God is with you and all the people around you and in this beautiful world. We miss you and we love you and I can't wait to see you again.